someone once famously said, it's all about education, education, education. And as you've said here, that is the point. Lack of women coming in, lack of children looking at um, physics in particular. And some very ambitious targets set in Engineering UK 2013 to improve that and reaching the influences. Angie Matthews already mentioned the prize. I mean, first of all, the issue of attracting women more women into engineering. How do you do it? You have to change the perception of mm. engineering. I mean, if you ask a, a young a, a kid, what is an engineer? They will draw a picture of a bloke <laughs> with a beard and glasses with a spanner in his hand. <laughs> so one of the uh, sort of jobs of the Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering is to alter people's perception. We work very closely with uh, Engineering UK on this. Um, and just to sort of make people realise the sort of the breadth and depth of what engineering is. You know, engineering's everywhere. You can, you know, you can be a, sp a fashion engineer, a sports engineer. You know, I've got this phrase that without engineering, we are naked in a field. You know, it's everywhere. All our equipment, everything in this room is made by engineers. And I think we need to get that across uh, to people. Uh, the, what, the great thing about this prize that I'm involved in um, who's, the ultimate aim of which is to um, um, ensure that you know, every single young person understands engineering and wants to become an engineer. It's the career choice of young people. And I'm really proud of the fact that at the launch of this prize, all three party leaders were there. Because engineering is the one thing that everybody agrees is really, really important. You know, we need more engineers and we need more young people to understand engineering. That's one of the things we were saying in the, in the introduction there is that it's, it's not the paucity. There's, there's the, the price that Angie is talking about. There's the government funding uh, initiative last week. There's Big Bang, tomorrow's engineers. How do you pull it all together? Because looking at it from the outside, it does seem that there's so many initiatives. Where do I start? Yeah, one of the things that I think actually everyone around the table has been brilliant at has been coming together in the uh, the two uh, programmes that we lead at Engineering UK, which are the Big Bang UK Young Scientists and Engineers Fair and Tomorrow's Engineers. And what we see through those is actually bringing companies like those around the table together with ourselves and, and the academy and so on, actually really starts to deliver results, gets lots of momentum behind it. People have a real thirst for this. Mums and dads are really interested. Teachers are really interested. And most encouragingly of all for us, um, young people are really interested. Bill, how important, when, you know, pre apprenticeships, how important is it? Uh, what sort of message do you send to the parents? Young people get options turned off by what the perceived position is by <coughs> parents. So I think there's a big job with parents, as there always has been, I think. Uh, but it also needs to be the places for these young people to go, because currently in our sector, only 18% of companies actually undertake apprenticeships, which means that there's 82% to go and hit at. What are these type of companies look like? They are the small and medium employers, which is the very largest number of companies in our sector, which we need to reach out and make sure that they are offering these opportunities. So I think there's a whole number of things. There's, there's parents... And uh, there's also the issue about the large companies uh, uh, who are now supporting the supply chain, trying to put initiatives in, like BAE Systems are over training currently for their supply chain, 50 places in their current apprenticeship uh, programme. Uh, but we need to get more small companies being independent in this because we're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of places needed. Sounds like a queue for a website, doesn't it? Ranching.com. Well, there, actually, we do have a website on the way. Um, <laughs> there, I mean, there are quite a, few of the, uh, quite a few websites being developed, but there's one in particular where the industry has come together called Plotter, P-L-O-T-R.com. Um, yes. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to put your apprenticeship vacancy on it and for apprentices to navigate it, because obviously if this is... Um, if it's complicated, that puts a lot of people off. I would say that half, more than half of apprentices are in small and medium-sized businesses, um, which is pretty incredible. Um, but there's much more that can be done there, because as you say... There's still 82% <coughs> of companies not engaging currently. Um, not yet. <laughs> yeah, ben, I mean, the, the, from your perspective, I mean, what would you like to see happen now in the, in, in the apprenticeship sector? Where should we be focusing our marketing effort? Um, 
are there a handful of those frameworks where we, we should be really putting all of our efforts behind on our budget? Um, and I think we need a lot more help from sector partners to reach the right employers. Because I think our, our marketing, we, we, you know, engineering is one of our priorities, but it's engineering in general. What are the hot spots? How do we zoom in on the real frameworks, the, the real, you know, subsectors, if you like, to make the difference that we, we want to see? Joe, I mean, Jaguar and Android must encompass all those intellectual property rights, software, yeah. hardware. And I think, uh, and, and for us, the challenge is, as a business, Jaguar and Android and many around the table are growing now. Um, apprentices reach out into the supply, the, the funnel, they bring in the talent, but we have to make the space within the organisation. You mentioned before that we're out growing and that has a consequence on our supply chain, which has a consequence on us, uh, diluting the supply chain by bringing talent here to us. What we need to do is to also focus in on our people and grow them. 80% of the people in business now will be in 2020. So you have to invest in career development to allow the space to bring new talent into the organisation without taking talent from the uh, supply chain. And that's at all levels, mm -hmm. because you're also talking about leader, talent, uh, moving leaders about the business.